Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I will recap one of a crime films from 2014, titled Convict. Before we get to the storyline, don't forget to like and subscribe for more film recaps and have a great day. The film begins by showing a war veteran named Ray Francis, who has just returned to his country. This will be his last time serving in the military, since he plans to leave the military and marry his girlfriend. Meanwhile, a beautiful woman named Kelly is having a good time in a city park. Not long after, Ray suddenly appears from behind and surprises the woman. It turns out that this woman is his lover, and she is delighted to see Ray since he had previously stated he would be home next week. Without wasting any time, Ray then takes out a ring and proposes to Kelly. Of course the woman is taken aback and delighted by Ray's proposal, which she accepts without hesitation. After that, the two of them intend to leave the park, but Kelly forgets to take the book she was reading with her, so Ray immediately returns to take it. It is at this point that bad things begin to happen to them both especially for Ray. Two men suddenly in a luxury car approach, and one of the men named Tim tries to seduce Kelly. At first Ray and Kelly tries not to respond to them and get into the car. But instead, Tim gets out of his car where he takes off his pants, and shows his torpedo right in front of Kelly's window. Ray becomes very angry and begins to beat the two guys, but Tim then pulls out a knife and Ray tries to parry the knife attack. Unfortunately the bad things continue to happen to them, because the man is stabbed to death by his own knife. Tim! Get up man! Due to that incident, Ray and Kelly go to meet their lawyer because it turns out that Ray is facing murder charges. The lawyer informs Ray that he is faced with two difficult choices. According to the lawyer, if he pleads guilty, his sentence will be only two to three years long, and he will be able to serve only 18 months. Otherwise if Ray does not enter a guilty plea, he could face a sentence of five to eight years in prison. In other words, Ray will no longer be able to evade his prison sentence if he chooses either of these two options. Finally it seems that he has decided to plead guilty and serve an 18-month prison sentence. We then move to the murdered man's father's named Harvey Thompson, and he appears unable to accept his son's death. Plus, it looks like the father isn't just any average person, and we can see that he sends his man to find out the identity of Ray Francis. The person also gives additional information about the location where Ray will be imprisoned. The scene then shifts to the prison where Ray will be imprisoned. Let me introduce this man. This man is Jack Morrison and he is the one who in charge of this prison. He is visited by the father of the man who was killed by Ray. Harvey who has been devastated by the death of his son, asks Jack to ensure that Ray will never be able to leave prison again. In return, he offers a large sum of money, which Jack would use to pay his subordinates to carry out his heinous acts. The day has finally arrived for the inmates to begin serving their prison sentences. One of the guards named Rico is greeting the new prisoners. At this moment, Ray and several other prisoners are ordered to remove all of their clothing, in order to be subjected to a security check. Rico also begins to hate Ray as he attempts to defend the young man next to him, who is being forced to remove his underwear. From the first day of his imprisonment, Ray has received physical contact from Rico. After that, Ray is taken by a guard named Williams to meet Jack Morrison. It is revealed here that Ray served in the military for 12 years, four of which were spent in Iraq. He was also awarded a Medal of Bravery for his acts in Iraq. At this moment, Jack tries to act nice as if he isn't up to something, and tells the guard to look after him. Williams then takes Ray to his cell and begins to warn him. I can be easy to get along with, or I can be your worst fucking nightmare. After only a few days, Ray starts to receive a warm welcome from other inmates. My fucking line, bud. Watch where you're fuck There is a bit of a fight, and then another group of inmates led by Mazen come to help him. It appears that there is about to be a fight between the two groups, but Williams intervenes and orders them to leave. In prison, Ray is assigned to work in the prison library. He then meets David, a senior inmate who tells him where the books will be arranged. As he makes his way to his cell, Ray is once again provoked by the other inmates, but he still manages to keep his emotions under control. While Ray is reading a diary in his cell, he is suddenly accosted by Rico and the others who start to check his room. Soon after, the old guard then found a photo of Ray's girlfriend. The terrible thing happens when Ray has to witness a photo of his girlfriend being licked by Rico, and he really wants to beat up that old guard. 
but he can't do anything because he is being held back by the other two guards. Moreover, Rico makes Ray even more angry by tearing up his girlfriend's photo. The other two guards' name are Victor and Fox. Rico then orders Ray to take off his shirt and starts to intimidate. Back. I said, look at me. I said, don't back. This old guard who is not satisfied with just hitting him, wants to do something much more extreme and luckily, Victor intervenes and prevents him from doing so. When Ray is taking a shower, he is once again treated badly by a prisoner there. At this moment, there is a big guy named Hammer who is impressed by Ray's torpedo. Ray is then asked to crouch down so that Hammer can sharpen his sword. Therefore, Ray greets him with a friendly punch and pushes him away. Rico then appears and beats Ray until he is brought back to Jack's room. Ray then tries to explain that he was only trying to defend himself against that gay man. But instead, Jack doesn't seem to care about it at all, and he claims that it is normal for them to share their asses there. Since Ray continues to argue, he is beaten again many times by the guards. Victor then asks them to stop beating Ray because he would get killed. At lunchtime, Ray meets up again with the inmate in the library, including Jade, a young man who is still only 18 years old. During their conversation, Ray notices a convict who had a fight with him at the beginning of his imprisonment. After that, he and David then continue their conversation about their past in the library. It is revealed at this point that David will not get out of prison, because 15 years ago he and his brother robbed a money truck, and shot two security guards as well as killing a police officer. His brother also died in the robbery and the money has still not been found until now, and only David knows where the money is hidden. During their conversation, Rico suddenly enters the room and informs Ray that he has a visitor. It turns out the visitor mentioned by Rico is his girlfriend, and from a distance, Ray gives her a big smile as this is his Kelly's first visit. But unfortunately their conversation only lasts for a short period of time, before Rico abruptly ends it and tells him to come in. Moreover, Rico deliberately provokes Ray once again by saying that he wants to make out with his girlfriend. They make every effort to provoke Ray's emotions, but they seem can't do so since Ray is a tough guy. After that, Ray gathers with Mazin and his gang while playing cards together. Because of Ray's tough behavior, Mazin offers to protect him during his time in prison. While 18-year-old Jade is working out, he is harassed by the gay hammer who has previously wanted to rape Ray. Jade who is still young man is almost beaten by him with dumbbell. Fortunately, Ray comes and helps Jade. Williams then immediately comes and stops them. From the beginning, Ray has been put under a lot of pressure, and he's still able to keep his head and body in the game. When he is cleaning the toilet, he is suddenly approached by the man who had gotten into a fight with him previously. The guy attempts to take a revenge on him, but it doesn't take much effort for Ray to beat him. As always, whenever Ray is fighting the bad guy, Rico will appear as if he has noticed Ray's every move. But this time Jack comes together with him. Jack who has been bribed by Harvey and has a mission of his own, takes a bat and pushes it into Ray from behind. The following day, the three bodyguards who had been bribed by Jack are gathering, and Victor begins to say that he doesn't want to be involved anymore. He also threatens that he'll be reporting this matter to higher-ups. After Victor left, Williams as the head of the guard comes to them, and it turns out that he is completely unaware of what is going on behind his back. He then scolds them for telling Ray to clean the toilet, since he had assigned Ray to work in the library. Throughout the conversation, Williams reminds his two men not to make any decisions without his permission again. Rico and Fox then go to Jack and inform him that Victor has decided not to get involved, and that he intends to ruin their plans. Jack then tells both of them to deal with Victor. After that, the two guards proceed to a prisoner's cell and begin to check his bed. They then find a sharp weapon, and they gets out of there after the prisoner is told to kneel down and apologize. When that convict is assigned to clean the toilet, he is shocked to find Victor who has been killed. Shortly after, Rico and Fox came and it turns out that this is a premeditated murder. They then accuse the prisoner who has been carrying the sharp weapon as the killer. During the leisure activity, Ray sits with David and tries to ask him about Mazin. David says that he is a big person here since he runs the drug syndicate from inside the prison and has his own gang. But from a distance, Mazin's group notice their conversation and they come to Ray and David. 
Ray is then cautioned by Mazen to be careful about which side he chooses in prison. This is due to the fact that other than Mazen's gang, there is another one gang which is the gang that becomes his rival. When Ray and David are taking a shower, Mazen's group suddenly come and stabs the man who had fought with Ray in the toilet before. It turns out that this man is one of Mazen's rival gang. Since Ray has been accused of murdering the man, so he immediately goes to see the gang and explains that he had nothing to do with the murder. The group is convinced by Ray that Mazen's gang is responsible for the death of the gang's man. The scene then moves to an 18-year-old boy, Jade, who is being abused by Hammer in a hidden room. The lights are turned off, and Hammer begins sharpening his sword once more. Ray's girlfriend on the other hand, has returned to visit Ray for the second time. But instead, she receives an unfair treatment from the two evil guards. Kelly is told to take off her clothes in order to pass through the security check. Since she has been waiting two weeks to meet Ray, she has no choice but is forced to do it. Bruh. Take it off. You smell nice. Of course Ray who knows about this is very angry, but he can't do anything. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jade is once again treated badly by Hammer, and he eventually musters the courage to kill him. Hammer is stabbed with a screwdriver in his torpedo. After that, Ray is called to Mazen's cell, where Mazen is enraged that Ray refuses to join him. While Ray is spending time with David, Rico and Fox suddenly come and bring him to the workshop. Moreover, it turns out that Mazen is behind both of their actions. Since Jack doesn't want Ray to be killed, Mazen threatens to kill any of Ray's close relationships, including David and Kelly. I'll fucking kill you. Hey. Rico then intends to injure Ray's hand, and it is at this point that Ray finally can't hold back his patience any longer, so he beats up that two evil guards. As a result of that incident, Ray eventually has to enter the designated and dark cell. Williams then goes to Jack's office, and asks why Jack orders the two guards to bring Ray to the workshop. But Jack doesn't admit it, and he reminds Williams that he is the one in charge of the prison. Ray on the other hand, is treated like an animal, and he almost goes insane after a few weeks there. After serving a lengthy sentence in a closed cell, he is finally allowed to leave the dark room. At this moment, he is escorted away by one of the guards which Jack doesn't bribe. Williams is trying to get to know from Ray, what the problem that causes him to be treated badly by almost everyone there. But Ray doesn't want to say anything because he doesn't want to trust anyone in the prison. It turns out that Williams is also a former soldier just like him. After Ray has recovered, Mazen still wants revenge on him and he asks Jade to stab Ray. But because Ray had always been there for Jade before, Jade couldn't bear the thought of stabbing him. As a result of Jade's refusal, Mazen instead kills him who has already becomes his group at that time. Ray who knows that his friend has been killed, can no longer hold back his emotions, and goes straight to Mazen's group in the field. After defeating the bald with three hits, Ray insults Mazen's actions of killing his own man. As a result, Ray gains support from other inmates, and he challenges Maz into a one-on-one -on -one duel. Jack is aware of everything that is going on, but he instructs the guards to let them fight. Ray who comes from a military background, will of course can easily defeat Maz. Until finally, Ray strangles Maz and almost kills him. But when he looks at David, he shakes his head indicating that Ray should not kill the guy. He then let go of Mazen, but there's a knife that suddenly lands on Mazen's side. Therefore, Mazen tries to take advantage of the situation to kill Ray from behind, but is blocked by David. Mazen is finally stabbed to death by the leader of the rival group. After that, Ray is brought by Williams into Jack Morrison's room, and Jack explains that Ray's prison sentence has been extended. Ray then curses him with harsh words and manages to provoke Jack's emotions. As a result, Jack eventually reveals that he has been paid a lot of money, to prevent Ray from getting out of prison. It turns out that it is all a trap, and armed with this evidence, Williams and his team show up and arrest Jack, the so-called boss in that prison. Take the cuffs off right now. I can't do that, Warden. Richto and Fox, the worst of the guards are also placed under arrest. After it is all over, 
Ray goes to see David who is still alive. It is at this point that David graciously tells him of the location of the stolen money he has hidden. He asks Ray to take the money and starts a happy new life with it. Plus, David also tells Ray how much he misses his daughter and asks him to give her a bag of money. In the end, Ray is finally released from prison and Williams gives him a farewell handshake. He is then greeted with happiness by his girlfriend. Apart from that, Ray meets David's daughter and gives her a bag full of money. As he is about to leave, he tells David's daughter to visit her father who had been missing her. Before the film ends, Williams is seen instructing the new inmates to wear the prison clothes. And it turns out that one of them is Harvey Thompson, the father of Tim. He is the one who bribed Jack and caused all of the troubles in the prison before. Convict. Okay guys. That's all the recap for Convict 2014. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.